So um, it's 5.30, so we can start this meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, this meeting is being recorded, and um, uh, the uh, members of the board are myself, David Bloomberg, Maureen Scanlon, and Elizabeth Silver, and uh, Nathan Chung is here from the City Office of Planning and Sustainability, providing staff support to the board. Um, notice of today's hearing was published on April 11th and April 18th, 2024. There's only one item on the agenda. Before we start, though, with that item, we always open the floor to any members of the public who may want to address general comments to the zoning board that do not relate to the application that's on the agenda before us tonight. So, uh, Nathan, I, I believe we do not see any other members of the co public co present. Is that correct? That's correct. There is no one else mm -hmm. present. Okay. So we'll note that uh, there are no public comments. And that means we can proceed with the application that's on the agenda <clears throat> tonight. Um, and before we do, I'll just mention that uh, we will start by asking the applicant or the representative of the applicant um, to briefly summarize the nature of the application. Of course, we have the materials already um, and um, and what the uh, relief is that is being sought. Then the board members would have an opportunity to um, ask questions. Um, and then if there were any members of the public present after the board members have asked all the questions they have, we would give an opportunity for members of the public to briefly address the application. Um, and we would ask that questions from the public be addressed to the board members, not to the applicants. And or um, and um, um, I think that's it for preliminaries, if I'm not forgetting anything. And so I, there's somebody else entered. Um, yes, I believe it's Sarah. It's as it's usually oh. her. Um, I'll okay. let her in. OK, yeah. great. Right. And give me yeah, it's another board member um right. for the applicants. Hi, uh just confirming, uh, let me unmute you. Uh, is this is this Sarah? Yes. Hi Sarah, I'm gonna make a co-host. We're we've been making uh, everybody co-host for security, some Zoom bombers. Okay. Hi Sarah. I'll find my good evening. Get my camera. So you can Sarah identify Northrup. me by my eyeballs. <laughs> uh, Sarah Northrup is the other member of the Zoning Board of Appeals who's present for this hearing as well. Um, so I think we can proceed with the uh, application for find a finding permit to update the non-conforming signs by Gabrielle Lemansky at 238 Bridge Road, map ID 25C-085. Um, so we'll ask the applicant or her representative to, uh, again, to briefly um, present the application, please. Okay. So we have two issues here. Uh, one is uh, excuse sign. me, I'm sorry, Mr. Yes. If, if each speaker could start by give, giving your name and your address for the record that's being kept. Okay. John Lemansky, 23 Carriage Road in Chicago, West. So we have uh, a couple of issues here we're discussing tonight. One is the uh, existing pole sign and the other is an existing wall sign. So on the pole sign, uh, we wanted to uh, remove some, some aspects of it. There's a pediment as an address. Uh, we wanted to take that off and reorient some of the panels that are currently on the sign to make better use uh, of the area. Not increasing the square footage, actually reducing and also on the wall sign, same concept there, there's an existing sign that's mounted to the wall, but it's not centered over the door. Um, it kind of looks like an add-on on the front of the building. It's not very aesthetically pleasing. So what I had recommended to Michelle, the owner, was to remove that sign, and we put up some nice dimensional letters on the wall itself, centered over the door, again, reducing the square footage of probably about 68% by my calculation, four square foot down to about seven and a half, seven point two square feet. Um, current pole sign has four slots for four tenants. 
Hope and Feathers occupies currently three of those spaces. There's a fourth tenant who does not want to be represented on the side. So our idea was to take the square footage of the three spots that would be allowed to the Hope and Feathers um, tenant space, resize it a little bit, reportion it so that it would be on one rectangle, leaving room along the bottom, um, the fourth tenant or the fourth space currently doesn't want to be represented on the sign. I think you have all the drawings in front of you, correct? Yes, thank you. And I think I saw in the application that there won't be any change in lighting. Or the uh, similar lighting, it'll be a different color temperature and there'll be a gooseneck fixtures. The fixtures that are there now are more of a utility type halogen bulb. Um, she wanted to remove those and get something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So she had suggested gooseneck lighting. Those will have uh, just warmer color temperature of 2,700K bulb illuminating the poles. Can I ask Mr. Lemansky, um, I'm seeing the, the, the proposed um, panel change. I'm not seeing any mock-up of what you're proposing on the what's now in the window. Is there one of that? Uh, there should have been. You should have received. It may. It may very well have been. We have a. I it should see, have been on this. Yeah. No. No. no I, I see that, but I'm not sure where on your my now top left with the, the lights coming down. So uh -huh. right in here, the word hope and feathers, and there in Michelle's logo lettering. In the centered, window. In the uh, window. It'd be, no, it'd be above on the facade, just below the gutter. Yeah. I. Sorry, I, you know, I, I'm not seeing that one. There, so, there to I get question, into. will there continue to be window signage? No, I don't no. believe there's any intention. Michelle could probably answer that, but those, I think those are just temporary signs, you know, coming soon and that, and I don't even think they still exist. They were probably removed once the Michelle moved over. They, they were removed. We currently have lettering in the window just as a temporary until our signage is up. So um, Nathan, I, I there were several pieces in this new thing that when I went onto it, it said not authorized and I couldn't get in to see the actual photograph. So if the one that Mr. Lemansky is talking about where it's a mock-up over the door, could you put that one up for me? And yeah. um, my apologies for the Luddite-ness of my computer. Yes, I'm gonna mm -hmm. share. Um, so I'm gonna share that design. Give me a second. I will. I have the one that goes in the panels, but not the one over the door. Right. I had the same issue. I thought it was just the file side. I just, huh. my apologies. My computer briefly froze for some reason. Um, it doesn't uh, like the new system. Yeah. It's, uh, it's actually taking up, I, it's partly our, um, I think it's improved security system for our, our city as a whole. But any, um, let me, uh, let me share the screen now. It just loaded. And please let me know if this is the right one. Um, I can try to zoom out a little bit. Oh, there we go. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that before. Okay. So in the upper right-hand uh, photo, you see the black panel that was the old sign. Oh, the, you know, the, the option, yeah, correct. The option would have been to reface that panel sign. Uh, but we thought it would be a little bit more upscale and more harmonious to the area if we did intentional letters. Black, the black panel isn't centered over the doors. Or over the doors, applied dimensional letters to the facade of the building right above the door. Right. It's lovely, the replacement one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to keep sharing or stop sharing? 
Um, I'm I'm good. Um, and David, you were asking about the lights for which sign or both? I guess both. I was curious about, and it looked like in that in that uh, image that Nathan just took down, there was a speck showing the lights. I assume those uh, gooseneck. See the lower left. That's the gooseneck that'll shine. Come, oh, I see, shine down over yep. the facade. Right, yeah. Over the so top. that the wall so, sign would have matching gooseneck light, matching on the wall to the pole sign. Mm -hmm. And in, they're not internally illuminated, right? The letters, no, no, yeah. those are solid, not illuminated. Letters. Okay. The illumination okay. would be external gooseneck. And the illumination obviously would comply with you know. The dark sky ordinance. Yes, twenty seven hundred K color temperature. And uh, would they be turned off at the close of business or shortly thereafter? I would assume so, unless Michelle could answer that question. Unless you want to leave it on a little bit later, because I'm not sure what time you close. We close at six o'clock. I do like to leave them illuminated on a timer until about nine o'clock, so folks driving by would see the sign. And it's, I think, it, is it? It's residential uh, buildings across the street, if I remember correct. If I picture this correctly, I think it's a mixture of residential and some office buildings. Higher shop to the right, a residential ho home to the left, and across the street, a professional resident. Professional? I thought it was I think just in red. terms of lighting. Um, we should I we should recognize that we're talking about the lighting again over the buildings, you know, that open feathers building facade and the one that's on the, the pole sign that's on the street. Like we might want to take a look at those, the timing of those separately. I agree. Like, because you're having this same style of lighting on the pole sign coming from both directions, right? Correct. Okay. okay, thanks. And may I speak, David? Sure, of course. Yeah, so about the lighting, um, the general ordinance, and I, I have to double check to make sure, but in general, um, the lighting needs to be turned off uh, for commercial lighting. Uh, it needs to be turned off an hour after the close of the business. Okay. That's the general regulation. So um, I can... Uh, so the it's outside the purview of the zoning board of appeals, but the overall lighting ordinance it's in uh, section twelve point two that would apply to you, and uh, you, know, we, you can work with the building department to uh, properly comply with it. And also, of course, we can help you um, after this. It's outside the purview, and of course, it's great you're talking about this. And um, David and Maureen, I can share the screen uh, the the plan for the other lighting on the pole sign if you want. Yeah, please. And so I think, Nathan, one point you're making is w this board doesn't even need to or maybe can't have a condition about lighting because as a matter of law under the other section of the ordinance, the lights have to be turned off an hour after the business closes. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, uh, you are really looking at um, the exterior dimension of the um, the signs, the non-conforming signs. The lighting is outside the uh, purview of um, today's uh, hearing matter. Is that so, a new ordinance? Because we've done that in the past. We've had a, a condition for turning off and on at certain times. Is, is that a relatively new section of the ordinance that says it has to, that it has to be turned off an hour after and and effectively, it's outside of the, the authority of this board because uh, I think that's new to me. Yes. So I don't know when that one came in, and I had to double check the content, but it, there was a major lighting ordinance update that got passed like maybe literally a month ago or two months oh, ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's a lot of, and the color temperature used to be 3000 K Kelvin, for example, and now the it's, it's now maximum is 2700. So some changes. Mm. So, I have another question about that. Yes. So that would apply, assuming that we gave permission to both of these signs, the lighting ordinance would apply to both signs. We, we wouldn't be able to say, you can do this sign with lights and this sign without lights, or could we? 
Um, hmm. My, it, is, it is my understanding, you know, so I understand maybe in the, so from my discussion with the director and the assistant director, um, the lighting is understood to be outside the purview um, of the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I, I see, I understand maybe you may have imposed that as a condition in the past. Um, well, if we, it, it, I mean, two sets of light at nighttime on two separate signs for mm -hmm. the same building seems to go against the dark skies, you know, the rationale for it. And so if, if we are automatically allowing lighting for both of those signs by allowing both of those signs, then you know, I, I'm saying hypothetically, I'm not saying this will necessarily be the case, but hypothetically, that certainly could affect how I view both of these signs because they're not as of right, correct? Yes, they're both okay. non-conforming in terms of very large size and ground sign, the pole sign is not allowed at all in the in the residential district. Um, I'm thinking- So because, this, is, this is URB, yeah. right? It's residential? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's grandfather, the use is grandfathered in. A commercial use right there was right. a 1989 variance um i know this is a maybe unusual proposal but maybe um if the if the board wants to impose a lighting condition you know maybe one light being turned off earlier um you can impose that with you know with the uh with the possibility that it might not be valid so if it's not valid by zoning if it's outside the purpose zoning board of appeals uh you know we'll update the decision so that's not included their condition but if it, if it is a valid condition that the zba can um implement then we can include that but i i would want to know that ahead of time because yeah, yeah. it as i said it might affect you know how i how i view these no pun intended so um, is there a, a way to get a quick answer to this or let me, let me, am, uh, am I the only one that's concerned about this? Because if, if I am, then you don't need to check, but. No, I, I appreciate that, Elizabeth. I am also concerned, I guess, because it's so new and we're just kind of navigating this and we're talking about a pole sign out front that's going to have three gooseneck lamps coming from both sides. And it, I got lost in the weeds, got buried in the weeds about lumens versus wattage versus LED Kelvin. And I, I, I want to make sure, like I want to like make sure that the city can follow that through to uh, advise the applicant to make sure that these this lighting conforms to it. But neither do I want to see those lights on longer than like much beyond business hours. I might feel differently about the lights over the facade, but they do, they, yeah, they do. I, I am, I share your concern. And I think partly it's that this is new territory. And if there's a value we play in um, following this path down, like understanding what where our role might be in it. I think this would this is a good case for us to understand that better. Yes, um, and apologize for not having a quick answer. Right, right. I can maybe try contacting Carolyn now. Um, the one thing is I can show you the ordinance that the new updated ordinance about needing to turn off the light at the close of business. Uh, I'll just, let me show you the, share the screen. So this might be a new section. So control the section. So all non-residential site lights must be turned off one hour after close of business. However, lights may be set to motion controls after close of business, so long as they are turned, time to turn off five minutes after motion is detected. So is non-residential referring to this particular business or the area? It's the site. 
It's a non-residential site. site like, okay. All right. So then it's this business. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also appreciate that you guys are we're looking at that because we've uh, often wanted to have less lighting for uh, applicants that come in front of the board. This suggests to me, Nathan, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that it would apply to both signs and that there would be the the all? right, assuming that we approve the signs, that they would have the right. All, all, all lights mm -hmm. on a non-residential site. Right. So right. That's helpful. Yeah. I, I'm also concerned because I'm pretty sure there's quite a few residential dwelling units right across the street that would be looking at this and of course, the one that got away from us, we always cite to, and I'm not comparing this to that one. In fact, every every application is stands on its own. Was the and we always refer back to the Academy of Music uh, lighting, uh, <laughs> which um, I think it's we wish we could have a, we wish we could have a do over on that one. And I'm not equating that to this at all, but but it's the reason maybe for the applicant why we're especially sensitive. Uh, to this um yeah the, the lighting at the academy is also led but it is no way no comparison to, to what yeah no i i i, 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 not saying I, it is. I yeah. acknowledge that I, I appreciate that um i mean i personally think otherwise the proposed signage i don't i don't have any other issues with it and and i do uh see that uh it looks like the decision is made for us because all lights have to be turned off one after yeah. or after closing. I suppose that begs the question: What if normal business close of business is midnight? <laughs> but um, I, apparently, that's not the case here. No. So what this is saying, which I think helps me a little bit, is that if the business is closing at six, all the lights are going to be off by seven. Right. Which makes this a little more palatable than if the lights weren't going off until nine. Right. But I assume we don't have the authority to say they have to close their business at six. I, I'm sure that's beyond the scope of our authority, because that's that's my to my point that uh, businesses that op open till midnight, the lights can be on till 1 a.m. Uh, well, I'm sure that's use... right. But on the other hand, the representation in this meeting that the business closes at six for me is instrumental in not having any issues with this signage. Right. But as I said before, you know, if that's going to change, then it might have an effect on one of the two signs that we're voting on tonight. Unless it's a package deal that we can't separate. Well, it does look like they all have to be turned off an hour after a close of business. And it has been represented that the business hours, the business will close at 6 p.m. Right. Again, I'm not sure we can make that a condition that feels like it's beyond the scope of our authority, but we are suffice it to say relying on that representation obviously we trust the uh, owner it's and things could change in the future i mean i guess we there's some things we can't control um, the, the use ordinance uh, the use section of what commercial uses are allowed in what zones um uh, does that cover well, in this case i think it would be the variance in 1989 because Ah, this is a residential zone, but otherwise, yes, I, that makes sense. But I don't know if we want to take a look at the 1989 variance. It's on re public record. Um, um, so does this, would this decision travel with any new owner? I think yeah. so. Yeah, right. Yes, it it carries, yeah, it catches. Regardless of the type of business or not. I think yeah, that's maybe that's oh well. So the use variance actually from 1989 has some limitations. You it cannot be a food business, for example. It's most limited to retail and um, um, service. And back to the lighting. My apologize for the confusion, but I actually um, there must be some miscommunication. Uh, Carolyn just confirmed me via text that yes, this is one of the purviews. The lighting you can have some additional conditions on the lighting and this is one of the things she said um yeah so yeah if there is a reason uh, you can impose and this is part of the permit review if uh the applicants are asking for permission for a revised sign and if the board determines that the revision is appropriate if lights are off at a particular time uh, that is a valid 
and I think I valid as you know valid condition to um, deliberate and impose. That's that confirms what we've always done before. So it's helpful to get that confirmation. Right. Yeah. So we can. Thanks. So I think everybody understands now that in fact we do have the ability to, and I don't think we're talking about anything inconsistent with what the owner has has indicated, uh, namely that we can make it a condition that that the uh, lights will be turned off at 7 p.m. It might duplicate the effect of that ordinance, but it can be a condition to our decision. What's new, I guess, is there isn't this new ordinance that that, that also states that it can't it have to be turned off an hour after the business closes. Um, we uh, shift gears a little and look at opening sure. hours. Yeah. And what, what the timing is there. So could we ask the owner that question? Yeah. Um, we open at 10 a.m. Okay. And, and uh, Nathan, does the ordinance address how early the lights can be turned on? Uh, maybe. The new ordinance? It's not. That is not my understanding, but let me check. Um, oh, you're checking me. I asked the appellant i assume that you're not planning to turn it on at three in the morning or any <laughs> anything like that and i can say that i've been in business for 14 years and i really haven't changed my hours in 14 years so it'd be pretty unlikely for me to unless business was really good and i had to stay open but i don't foresee that happening well i think that grace hour that the ordinance has you know anticipates situation like what you're talking about yeah. um there can be people remaining in the in the store um you want to walk to your car you know of those things but um i'm very happy with the hour and and right. i and i think we do include that yes yeah, like we can we can make it a condition we always have in the past yeah and i think we should just so that if you know to the extent that it travels to any other subsequent business which um, it could yeah which it could um so by the way i'm looking at the decision of the ZBA from January 4th, 1989. Dr. LeBan was the chair. He was my dentist when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> Even before me. <laughs> uh, uh, although I wasn't a kid in 89, but he was my dentist. So um, what they did there was they uh, acknowledged that physical therapy office would be appropriate. Parking uh, on the site is in a residential zone is awkward and limited. So they liked that it was by appointment only, although I don't think that's what they're requiring here. The finding was that the list of qualified tenants outlined in the um, would include retail establishments with maximum floor area of 10,000 square feet per floor for any single establishment selling general merchandise, including not limited to dry goods, apparels, I just dot, dot, dot. That's sure. right. Very short. <laughs> Hold on. And that's accessories, furniture, home furnishings, home equipment, smallwares, hardware. Uh, miscellaneous professional business offices and services, including but not limited medical, legal, professional, financing, banking, insurance, and resident. I don't think it really that doesn't add anything to this discussion, but that is what that that decision said. Um, so any other questions from board members? And uh, Nathan, once again, I don't think we see any other members of the public here. So there's no one else to who might want to address or ask about this application. That's correct. There's nobody present. And I I went through the lighting ordinance and I don't think it talks about a particular hours when the lights could be turned on or mm -hmm. off. But, you know, as a part of your condition, you can specify those hours as well. OK. Um, um, yeah, the only thing I would like to say to the appellant is that None of this is a reflection on the potential changes of these signs. We're just trying to follow the precedent that we've had from prior cases, as well as be cognizant of what, you know, Northampton is looking to do now around lighting. Um, so just don't take this personally. I totally understand. Thank you. for that. And we also, well, I'll speak for myself. I'm, I'm a little concerned about people across the street complaining that, um, there are these bright lights that weren't there before, but but that having been said, I'm I'm I personally am very comfortable with not only the signage but um, the discussion we've had about lighting, with the idea that we will have a condition for how early the lights can be turned on, and 
and and reinforce the requirement as a condition to our decision would this would be my suggestion that the lights have to be turned off an hour after the business closes in accordance with the new ordinance um and of course we don't have to say anything about complying with the rest of the uh dark skies ordinance because that's true as a matter of law whether we say anything or not um i'm a little bit concerned about framing it just an hour after business closes um because so, as I you ask, point out before done with the public part of this and are we now in deliberation well I, we, well, we can the public I, yeah, but we can yet. i think we should deliberate before we close the public hearing so yeah, so if we want to respond come up with an idea that requires more input from the applicant or the okay, owner thank you. Okay. So, I, so what I was saying is that I, I just I would like to impose an actual time based on the representation of the appellant that business is going to be closing at at six because if we just say close um, yeah, at the close yeah. of business that could be changed you and it know, could be a future a owner of the business who right, stays right. open till eleven p.m. Right. I'm, I'm fine with that and I assume the app the owner is as well. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. I feel um, that's a really great balance and the sign the poll sign i feel should we should set a like time that that will go off that that will go off because that's much more distracting to the neighborhood than the signs the goosenecks that are just right down over the facade of the building right. although aren't we, we talking about having both. a time for both yeah both. i think we're talking yeah, about having yeah, a time but for i both. i think we should i think there is a, a benefit to just to differentiate those because I think the signs that go over the lights that go over the facade sign, the wall sign are much less impactful in the neighborhood than the pole signs, the, the pole sign, the lights on the street. So I would consider breaking those out that the ones over the facade are go no longer than an hour after the business closes, but the one on the street goes off at six or so, something to that effect. Well, couldn't we just say both that, oh, six, you mean when the business closes? No, I think what Maureen is saying is that an hour so that there's leeway if the business ends up staying open later to seven, that it's an hour after that for the one over the okay, yeah, over I'm, the I'm top. And, I, I, yeah. I get it. What if, what if they become so incredibly successful that they become like a 24-hour shop, like a Kinko's <laughs> or something? You know, I just feel like... Well, yeah, it's fine. I'm, I mean, I'm not sure forward I, to me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure I would agree with that. I mean, even though they're not um, as, you know, problematic for the surrounding neighborhood, they still are a problem. There are three lights that are coming down, right? As I understand it. Mm -hmm. And they're all of that very high luminescence. Um, so I, I would are you still... Referring, you're referring to the existing lights? The no, existing no, no, the, the, lights the are ones that are planned to come over, the ones on the face of, on the facade of the building. Yeah, they won't be very bright lights. They're not high intensity. The existing lights that are on the pole sign now are very bright halogen bulbs, but the new lighting is, is going to be much more subdued and subtle and in a different color temperature as well, a warm white. Right, we're just uh, we're just talking about the ones over the facade right now, not the okay. pole, because the pole we're very clear that we're going to be, um, I, I believe that we're going to set that at a seven o'clock shut off, but the ones over the building that Maureen was just talking about, recognizing that there's a possibility that the business might end up staying up out up you know business may stay open later. She was suggesting that we leave that a little bit more flexible. And I was disagreeing with her because regardless of the fact that they may be softer lights, they may not have, you know, they may not have the same level of impact on the surrounding area as do the pole lights. Nonetheless, um, I still think that they do have an effect on a residential area. And so um, I I would continue to advocate for seven o'clock on both of them but i appreciate you know that you're thinking about this separately um it it doesn't change it for me though yeah. thank you there and i'm fine, I'm fine with seven o'clock on both of them and actually this is a i'm sorry to add a detail i just i missed earlier um and there is a specific section on the lighting ordinance about sign lighting and one of the sections says uh 
So besides having a downlight requirement, no uplight, um, all business sign lights must be equipped with a photo control and be turned off at the close of business, unless the planning board approves an alternative through site plan review and in compliance with subsection D5 above. And then at the bottom, uh, at that same section, there is a table of a different um, uh, different luminous, lumens requirements based on how reflective the surface is. So now I'm confused. So one of these so, signs has to be turned off at close of business, not a, the hour after is a different section relating to only one of the two signs. Right. So actually, so my 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 mistake. Um, that the one that I talks about the one hour after the close of business. That's general site site lighting. You know, lighting for the site. Um, not 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 the sign lighting, but oh. we these are sign lighting. So there's a more stringent um sign lighting ordinance that's built in into the updated the uh, zoning ordinance. Oh, so and what you just read was site lighting or oh, sign sign s i g n. My, I'm sorry if I wasn't and clear. Site was the hour after. Yeah, site, hour we, did, after. we did see the word site, but we assumed it related to signs. So right. Site okay, lighting. So now <laughs> we're down to six o'clock. Right. Is that, is that what we're saying? And it's covered by the ordinance, yeah. Unless the appellant is saying business closes at seven. Right. It's when the business closes. So we can still say, but not later than if people are more comfortable with that. Okay. That, right. I think that's it, David. That's it. No, when the business closes are no later than seven. Right. Right. Does that... Or Does that work people. for everybody? Well, when the business closes are no later than a half an hour beyond. I mean, it's like this. That doesn't address if the business stays open till midnight. Right. We right. Still so run into what that. we're saying right now is we're basing it on the business closing at six. So you're, you're suggesting we set the time of six regardless? No, oh, so then, business closes. Okay. No, well, seven. the other alternative is to say when the business closes and know that if a business comes in, that is a new business comes in or this business uh, like chooses to expand its hours, they have to come back and ask, like ask for us to review this again to perhaps let them expand the lighting time. But they wouldn't have to come back to us if we just said close a business and they just chose to expand that. I still think this is a reasonable um, condition to say at the close of business or seven o'clock. But in no event. No event later than seven o'clock, whichever, yeah. whichever comes later. Yeah. Uh, whichever comes later. Uh yeah. Would you by oh, by no, that time no later than seven o'clock by yeah by the close of business or seven o'clock whichever comes later or how David said it is fine too yeah because whichever comes later means if they close at midnight they don't have to turn off the lights till midnight because that's later than seven no 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 it's oh I see I'm so, you're right but but in no event later than seven later but but in any event not later than seven p.m. I think is the there way there you go say. yeah that's good okay that's good um, yeah so. Whichever is earlier. Right. That works. <laughs> that works. So should we? Uh, does does either the appellant or Mr. Lemansky want to say anything at this point in response to any of this? Is it all making sense? It makes sense to me. It sounds it sounds good to me. But I would leave this to Michelle. I mean, if we want to say the lights off, um, you know, no later than seven o'clock on the lighting. I don't see an issue with it. I'll leave it to Michelle, the business owner. After 14 years, she hasn't changed her hours, so I don't. <laughs> yeah, that that works for me. It's great that the both the lights can be the same because I think we only have one timer, so that right. would be yeah. a significant <laughs> expense for that, me to change that's it. <laughs> good, good to know too. Um, okay, so our maybe now we're ready to for a motion to close the public hearing. After which we cannot have any input from the applicant or the owner. So. Um, are any other, if there are no other comments for, yeah, Nathan, please. 
Yes, mm -hmm. thank you, David. Uh, before you close the hearing, um, beside, so you just discussed um, when to turn off the lights off. Do you also want to discuss when the lights can be turned on? I mean, we could say not before X a.m., I suppose. I don't really feel the need to do that. Um, I just, the likelihood of this, of this business opening in the dark or the mm -hmm. business getting transferred to somebody who might open a business in the dark. I, I don't know. I just think it's a little remote, but. And I don't think we've ever done that before, a, a deadline for the morning, um, maybe for that, based on that reasoning. I, I can't. Hmm. I can't think of one. I can't either. So I am aware that we have not discussed anything having to do with the actual signs. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Which is, um, you know, central to our purview. Yes. I don't have any we issues. Got, we focused on the lighting. Yeah, I don't think I have nice. any issues either, but let's make sure we've thought about that. The and nice. an improvement. Smaller. What's that? Sorry. They're smaller in size, less square footage. Yeah, I think it's an improvement. And it's, I think it's a real improvement. Yeah. Um, I think it's a creative way to repurpose that pole sign and um, <laughs> allocate space should that remaining unit want front street signage. It's going to have more prominence because they're using, you know, larger real estate of that sign, but it's proportionate to the amount of space they're occupying in the building. So I think that's responsibly done. And similarly, I think the sign that goes on the facade is responsibly done because it's not, um, because it's over the entrance, over the doorway, right? So navigationally, it's more respectful. And because it's cut out lettering versus a flat sign that has color behind it, it's actually more um, understated. So... I think I think it's good uh, use of space. I think it's well done. I don't have any concerns with it. Yeah, same. Good. Anything else before we close the public hearing? So a motion. Uh, I'll move to close the public hearing. Good. No. Second. I'll second. Okay. Um, I... I'm needed. Yeah. And I guess we need a roll call since we're virtual. Yes. So by roll call, uh, David. Uh, yes. And this is just to close the public hearing. So we're not done, folks, but uh, yes for me. Okay. And Maureen? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. I think it had to go to Sarah instead of Maureen. Though. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was looking at my Zoom. You, no, you, are, you are laid out randomly on my Zoom. My apologies. So, um, yeah, my, um, I'll start over. Um, David? Yes. And uh, Sarah? Uh, sorry, Elizabeth? Yes. And Sarah? Yes. Okay. So, um, so and are we ready to uh, make a motion on the request for the findings? I'm ready. I'm going to take a crack at it. Go or... for it. Okay. <laughs> I was just responding to the already. That, you know, get yourself in trouble. All right. I move <laughs> that we uh, approve the application of the appellants on the uh, request for the two signs um, and that the lighting on both signs shall be turned off um, at the close of business or David, no later than 7 p.m. Yeah, but in any event, in, or you can say event, no, the yeah. earlier of the close of business or 7 p.m. There you go. What he said. And um, right. And technically, I think just I can say this to you because you're a lawyer too, Elizabeth. I think mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're moving to to grant the request for the finding, right? Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah. So um Oops, I lost my Zoom screen. Okay, there we go. Yeah, are. I don't have any of that up right now in the okay. computer. Yep. So, so yes, so, thank yeah, you. I was just looking at the actual uh, agenda. So, so, um, and I guess do we have a second on that motion as presented? Second. Okay, and uh, so we're ready for any dis any further discussion. If not, we can have a roll call vote on the motion as presented. 
Yes, uh, before I take the roll call, um, just for formality's sake, um, and I think Maureen actually stated a lot of the regions, but for the finding, yeah. you know, yes, the focus good. is, uh, focus is, you know, you know, finding that it's not substantially more detrimental. Right, thank you. Thank and you. also, yeah. you know, that um, to also to confirm that the sign will not be more non-conforming than it already, yes. it already is. Yes, thank you. So yeah, we should just, state that for the record, that we, that based on our review of the application as presented, we have determined that the uh, proposed new signage is not substantially more detrimental. It's not more non-conforming. In fact, we've discussed the fact that it is... Um, uh, a smaller square footage, and we find it aesthetically more pleasing than the existing signage, which goes to the issue of not substantially more detrimental. Right? Does that cover it, Nathan? Thank you. Good. Now I think when you're ready, Nathan, after you jot that down, we can have a a, a roll call vote. All right. Uh, by roll call, uh, David? Yes, I vote in favor of the motion. And Elizabeth? Yes. And Sarah? Yes. Hey, that's unanimous. By the way, was there an article in the paper about your store, uh, uh, Michelle? Yeah, it was yeah. very, very nice article. We really wish you the best. It looks like yes. a wonderful business. Yeah, we're very happy to be here in town and in this spot. We're yeah. really loving this location. Good. It's yeah, it's quite visible too. It's coming into town. And, um, good. We wish you the best. And sorry, I'm not going to apologize, but. We you you understand we needed to sort of grind through that because of course. the concern about lighting was really obviously the biggest part. Um, uh, anything else, Nathan? Before I think we have on the agenda a motion. Uh, we need uh, to vote on some minutes, but okay, can we? But I just wanted to say good luck to the appellant also, and thank you for improving the area. I think yeah. it'll be a lovely addition. I appreciate and, it. Thanks. And who doesn't need a good framing shop? I mean, it's a really good thing for the town. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I just I'll, want to note to the I'll, board I'll that Jason, <laughs> oh, Jason Raboin, oh, he just stepped out. So I, I just wanted to note to the board, Jason Raboin just joined and he just left. Okay. <laughs> that was my yeah. husband. Oh, he okay. wanted to come to the meeting. He was a little late. Oh, That's okay. New okay. for him. Okay. <laughs> well, there will be minutes of the meeting. <laughs> I'll yeah. share those with him. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I guess you're running the business, aren't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anything else, Nathan, for this app? This, uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, the standard procedure, I'll contact uh, uh, Gabriel or whoever is, uh, you know, whoever wants to be contacted about the next steps. Uh, you know, we have to issue the informal permit, uh, non certified permit, but then um, you need to wait 20 days to allow for the, the state appeal period. Right. So I cannot install the sign for 20 days? That's state law. Yeah. So, so the idea it's 20 days, not from today, but from the date the decision is reported by Nathan's office to the city clerk. After 20 days, you get a certified copy from the city clerk certifying that no appeals have been filed because it's a 20 day appeal period. The risk if you did start putting up the sign is if somebody were to file an appeal, which is obviously extremely unlikely, but but um, you need to record after the 20 day period expires, a certified copy from the uh, the uh, town or the city clerk stating that no appeal was filed, that gets recorded in the land records and based on that permits can be issued and so on. So sorry about that delay, but it's in the statute. So if I were to install it before the 20 days, the risk would be somebody would appeal it and then I think that's um, the only risk. It's at your own risk. Okay. Is that true, Nathan, or could the inspector issue like a cease and desist? Uh, so in the past, uh, it might be more of a special permit, but in the past, um, if the applicant proceeded to install it without a, so it's a steps, right? You need to ideally file the finding permit and then get the Sign, or, you know, normal sign building sign permit from the building department to install. Uh, in the past, um, if you proceeded to, well, they, the building department simply wouldn't issue a permit if the finding permit or the special permit has not been filed. Wow. So, so I won't I, actually be able to install until the building department has said yes. 
<laughs> yeah, I will double. So I'll file it promptly. I'll work on filing promptly. And then I can also check, double check with my director and other departments. But uh, that's my, in general, that's has been the yeah. case. So <laughs> the building, the building permit for the sign that needs to be issued for you to physically install it, they usually do not issue it unless um, this finding permit or the special permit has been recorded first. I, I know for a fact that there are cases where people have proceeded at their risk right. on, on the theory that in a million years, who's going to appeal? Nobody's here at the hearing to object to it. Um, but but I don't think we can advise you to do that. I see. Okay. And, <laughs> and it goes to the question of is, is the building inspector out there policing these things, you know, seeing you put up a sign so he issues a cease and desist, those things informally tend to be complaint driven by a neighbor or something but but you understand why we cannot say go ahead Completely. and put up your sign i'm just yeah. trying to understand what's recommended what's possible all of that so that's helpful yeah it's definitely the correct practice is to wait the 20 days record the certified copy that you get from the city clerk it gets recorded in the hampshire county registry of deeds and then you show proof of recording to the building inspector in order for him to issue the permit. Correct, Nathan? Yes, that's the standard procedure. And yeah. I'll double check, but yes. And it's I'll... worth double checking because maybe with signs, it's a big, who cares? I don't, I just don't know that. Um, so, okay. It's just a bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> Not of our making. Not in this yeah, case, anyway. It's, yeah. It's still a great place to be. <laughs> um, so, okay, I think um, good luck. You. we can just, I think we can just uh, now, the only other item I think we have on our agenda is to review and approve a set of minutes. Um, Actually, there were a couple of items Nathan had. Oh, okay. Yes, um, Carolyn just wanted you to, um, up, wanted me to update you on the zero growth lawsuit and uh, settlement and judge, judgment and settlement. And uh, yeah, and thank you, Gabriel. And uh, thank John, you, you're welcome thank to you. stay. You. You're, you're welcome luck. to stay. But that's uh, okay. <laughs> <of course. laughs> okay. Thanks again. See you next time. Dinner. You. John. So yes. Um. So I, you know, the Zero Grove Avenue. Um. <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing. Um. Yeah, the lawsuit. Uh. Yeah, the the uh, applicant won in the superior court appeal, and uh, I just made a very brief presentation uh, for you to to update you on that. If you, ah. if you wish to, yeah, if you wish uh, to what, what was this about? I'm I'm blanking on what this is about. This is that piece of property in Leeds that we determined did not have adequate frontage. Oh yes, for him to develop it right. right. I had to do some digging land. to even remember it because I didn't think it was even identified as Zero Grove Avenue, but I, it was that, right? Is okay. that correct? It's Maybe. interesting well, because... Where he gave land to the bike path. Yeah, right. that's the one. And was... the, what's interesting, I was biking up there the other day and the house before, remember the, what are those yellow things in the middle that... The Ballards. Ballards. Thank you. those things that was that was up there and the house before it not the land after it that was at issue has done an add-on to their house i don't know if you've noticed that but um i did get an email from rose bookbinder and she was very very upset about this about the addition or the no decision about the, the decision court. yeah so so the superior court upheld the position that the owner applicant was taking that he had adequate frontage and so on to make that a lawful building lot. Yes. The general, the general idea was, um, so the, the, the argued, the disputed front is it's at the very end of Grove Avenue, rather than being along Grove Avenue, it's at the very end, the tip end. And it, um, it actually formed a you know a sufficient length. It just happens to be on the very end. And there's where the dispute was, and the way the zoning ordinance is written, uh, it doesn't explicitly say it has to be parallel or be along a road. It, it just it says just on a road. So I think so. The judge, um, from my understanding, basically took that more um, liberal interpretation. And said that there was so, sufficient setback based on the 
as you're on the road, it's that piece the so end of going the this end. way, right? Yeah. The front, yeah, front is. And, and, and yeah. That's is there going to be an appeal? Is the city, the city's not going to appeal that, are they? No. And I can't. Well, I can just mention it quickly, but no, that's not the plan. And actually, I had the my my PowerPoint. If you do not wish to see it, that's fine. But yeah, it. They, I'll just. I'll. Okay. Yeah. Would, would, I know some people hate PowerPoints, but would people be? Would the members be okay with it? Yeah. Right. It's. Okay. It, this is not. Doesn't take too much time, right? It's right. Just... I will actually just breeze through, and I won't cover everything in the. I will just. Most of it already discussed, so there's no need to go over You're everything. Right. Okay. Uh, here I go. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, you, so here we go. So you know, basically, what happened? You you know, your ZBA appeal, and then and then um, the superior court upheld the applicant's claim. This is the geography, right? This is endpoint, mm -hmm. and, and that's the bike path right beyond that endpoint, yes. right? Yeah, okay. Right, but main argument was that you know it's this the endpoint, the frontage at the or the yeah the uh, disputed frontage at the endpoint, which I marked in green, um, that that was a dispute. Right. And the rough timeline won't go through. Basically, it was almost a, a three-year process from the initial um, denial by the building commissioner all the way to superior court um, appeal. So these are the main reasons why the city opted to settle first. That is not a, there's not a very strong case to appeal and incur public costs. Number two, it's a single building lot, so the impact is limited. And wetland issues will be addressed with the separate conservation commission wetland permits. Did so they it, deny yeah. them? Which one? The wetland permits. Oh, it's it's not even. Been, I mean, nothing has happened yet. the The property just got listed for sale, um, from my understanding. So, there isn't actually a, like an active um development going on or being proposed, from my understanding. So after all that, the owner wants to sell it. I mean, I think that's what the owner had in mind from the start. Right, I thought that he had a buyer back then. He probably lost that buyer. Oh, right. I thought he wanted to build. So well, one of our one of our um. I think points that was compelling to us was the city having concerns about getting a fire truck in or emergency vehicles in. Uh, there's enough frontage regardless. That that's what. So if you yeah yeah it's that green section I marked um it, yeah. it is roughly fifty feet it is you know it is sufficient it needs to be fifty feet that's the default for I think it's URB or URC that's the default frontage and it is wide enough it just happens to be at the tip end of a road rather than along a road and if you want if the city wants to prevent these kind of dispute in the future it will need a zoning ordinance update by the city council. Uh it's interesting they call it a limited impact because I think this is the third one, the third lot of this type that but I've there was seen. Dewey Court. Remember Dewey years. Court? I do remember Dewey, Dewey Court. Remember I think Dewey it was the Court. same issue, Dewey Court. They, they applicant claimed frontage on the end of a road, end of Dewey Court. I think it also involved the number of units that they were proposing to build yeah, on the that density. one. density. Yeah. 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 Also up in uh, in Florence, that uh, it is Strawberry Hill, and you come at it from the west yeah. side. There was a lot tucked up there that was on the end. Right. Well, I guess for our purposes, the law as, at the moment, unless, until they change the ordinance, is that we can consider frontage at the end of a road as adequate frontage if it's the minimum 50 feet or whatever is required for length right that zone okay interesting uh, and, is there a written decision that you might be able to circulate nathan from the court or was oh, it just from the settlement from the court oh yes actually carolyn downloaded it and uh she put it on the um she put it on the fold i'll i'll remember to um just send us the link you, of, yeah and a link yeah. that we can actually get to <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, um, we're, <laughs> we're a butters given the opportunity to um participate in that appeal case hmm. that's a good question um 
I don't know. I'm, I'm Others sure get they... notice of an appeal to the court? I don't know the answer to that. It just seems like, look, I, I hear one of them was an that architect concern was that the, the butters were, you know, are, are probably extremely upset about this. Yeah, I'm sure but they were are. Were they given the opportunity to participate in this appeal? Or to file opposing briefs, I suppose. Yes, yes. I, in which, whatever which way. Participate you know, which would be in whatever way. Participation. I don't know the answer to that, because you're right. There are going to be some unhappy people. There are unhappy people. Oh, you already know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, anything else other than the minutes from February 22nd? I have. I couldn't find the minutes anywhere. I don't your know where they are. Nine, your 5-9 um, confirmation or other meetings, Nathan? <laughs> Yes, so yeah. April 9th, there is a re small residential finding at 4 p.m. Uh, May 9th. May 9th. Yeah, sorry, May 9th. May 9th, did I say April? I'm sorry. Uh, May 9th at 4 p.m., um, 249 Crescent Street. So, you know, for a residential finding, we just need one. Of course, there can be more members present. But I believe Elizabeth and uh, Maureen confirmed that Elizabeth was tentative. And so, and I think Maureen was a definite confirmation. Uh, confirming confirming to be available on May 9th. So you need one neighbor. person. You need well it's it's one person acting as zoning administrator, correct? Y yes. It, like we did before COVID. So it's just one person on right. behalf of the whole board acting as so-called zoning administrator. Everything else is the same except that one person does everything, opens the hearing here's the evidence or the whatever application, and then it renders a decision. Um, I'm also available that time. And I don't know, I don't so, think I've done one of those in a while either, unless somebody else really wants to, I'm willing to do it, but. So is it more appropriate that it not be, you know, an associate member, Sherry or I? The first one I did, I was an associate. So I don't think that really matters. I think, you know, as long as Nathan's with you and you can ask questions. Yeah. I'm it willing did, to do I, it if, 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 if uh, unless, if, but I, but I'm willing not to. So I'm just putting that out there. I haven't done one in a while either. And um, so I can, I, I, I'm sorry, I missed the date you were talking about. Uh, May 9th at 4 p.m. But Maureen, do you want to do it? You're welcome to no, do it. No, I gladly bow out. <laughs> okay. I have that's, to say. That's what he wanted to know. I was... mean, the only reason I would consider even participating is I learn along the way. But uh, yeah, no, I. Uh, well, I, you know, I wonder if it'd be helpful for you to observe whoever, because it's open to the public, observe that's kind of whoever more does my interest, handle it. You know? So you can see it's like. Yeah. It's like watch one, do one, teach one. You know, you just you just need to see it once. But but that's fine. Um, it can go I awry. Say? I have to say. Oh, I've, I've had, had it go. I've had twenty five people in the room. That's, I had one like <laughs> and that. Carolyn was like, "Why did I do this right. for a four p.m. zoning administrator?" Right. And the one I had that went awry, there was a lawyer that lived next door to the person wanting to do whatever it was that she wanted to do, and this particular person this lawyer just went ballistic yeah and and yeah. came up yeah so i had yeah. one that turned yeah. into a three ring circus the idea is they're scheduled for 4 p.m for one zoning administrator on the assumption that this is just so simple and easy it doesn't need to take the time of the whole board but if yeah. i don't if i'm not mistaken i thought there's a mechanism for like bringing it to the whole board if, if you need to bail and say look this is way more than oh, i sure. want to deal with myself is that correct? I'm pretty sure Absolutely. that's right. You, you continue it. Right. Okay. And maybe you continue it. To, so you continue it to a meeting of the full board. Yeah. Okay. So just so as a reminder, because I think that's probably what I did the time I did. It was like, this isn't, people were screaming at me. And it was like, <laughs> that's not what's supposed to happen at these things. <laughs> and if they were screaming at you, David, that's pretty bad. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, no, nobody I, I, showed up. And one where it was one person, it was very no, quiet. Should. Yeah, mo no. I've done several, and usually it's super easy. But so, do you, Sarah, do you want to do it? I know you're on your way out the door, but if you, uh, or do for it, sure, do it. I I would be available. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to? But if you do, yeah, it's great. It's been okay, a while. And... So so Nathan, Sarah will handle the one four p.m. on the okay. running out the door. Okay, and, and I mean, I think Sherry mentioned that she was available for that. So maybe with the clarification oh. based on what we just discussed, 
yeah. to invite her to observe, knowing that yeah, that's a good idea. I don't think she it. should I, do I, it. She... Like, I think that would be very purposeful. Yes. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yes. So I so um, I so um, Sarah will run run it, but I'll invite Sherry to observe. Mm -hmm. Sarah, how long do we have you? Oh, uh, well, I barely got here. I just can't got back from Greylock. So it's just kind of a chronic thing that my schedule is unpredictable. And so I was thinking it'd be better if you had someone more predictable. So, so, how, so how long? The search has begun, I think, but I'm not going to just disappear. I'm not going to bail on you. I just got an email from the mayor's office today telling me that my term expires this June and do I want to reapply? And um, the answer is yes. <laughs> I think mine expired last June. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, uh, and what is it for two years? Is it, is it a two year term? Three and years? I remember to notice that. Um, because I actually retired April 1st and I will be in London a lot more, but I'm hey, prepared wow. to stay, stay. Yeah, I'm prepared to... Uh, to stay on for a while. It's just, you know, when I first saw that email, I said, oh, well, it might be a convenient time to leave, but maybe it's not a good time if Sarah's leaving and Sherry's new. Um, just for continuity, I'll hang in there. Thank you. Um, and so, this four um, o'clock will be at Zoom? Also not in person at City Hall? Okay. Yeah, it'll be it'll be via Zoom. Um, well, congratulations on your retirement, David. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. Did you shave in in celebration? Oh, I just did that. I got tired of it for spring. My, not my, you know, I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I've been a flight instructor for 25 yeah, years. Right, right, so right. I'm I'm on the schedule at Northampton Airport now, several days a week, instructing, just doing all the things I've always rather be doing while I'm healthy enough to do them. So that's great. That's, that's a big part of it. And doing some music, working with horses again. So oh, all good cool. stuff. Um. So uh, any uh, just the two twenty two minutes, I think the February twenty two minutes, which I keep saying I haven't seen. I, where are they, Nathan? Oh, um, this there whole was, new system, I, you know. Let me. Let me. It doesn't work there, for me. Yeah, there was an email. Where I sent out the email with the you know, minutes attached. Uh, I think last week. Um, let me just send it to you again, Elizabeth. Right. Well, then yeah. I should have it. So let me just see. I see a reminder for the hearing. Was that it? And uh, the agenda. That, I think I see the agenda. So let me find the email title. Um, oh, I'm, I'm not seeing anything. Um, oh, here, nope. attach the minutes. Let me try to see if I can get this to you, Elizabeth. Um, let's see if you'll pop up here because it's my Gmail account, Elizabeth. Silver one two three Gmail. Yeah. Okay, here it comes. Okay. It's from my Gmail account. Okay. Um, they're not too controversial. So that's what I should use for you from now on, huh? I guess so. I mean, the other one is 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 active, and but um, but I, what I really want to do is change the name of this email address to get the law offices out of it. But but you, I mean, I'm still I still get both emails till okay. further notice. But um, but I think all that happened at this hearing was a couple of things were withdrawn. 129 Riverbank Road. Oh, there we go. Okay. And um, uh, board units. You know, and then Sherry, a the left side garage was withdrawn without prejudice. So Got that's it. actually the only thing that happened at this hearing. Okay. It was the grant of two different requests to withdraw without prejudice in terms of, you know, content. I wasn't there. So I wasn't either, but I did read these minutes. So two people want to just take a quick peek at them before. Yeah, no, that that's fine. Um, I'll move to uh, accept the Actually, minutes. Actually, I'd like to, um, is that I had posed a question to Nathan for clarification on a oh, sentence yes. I didn't understand. And Nathan um, said he was going to change a, a clearer wording that isn't reflected in this. Because this is the first version. Right, right. So where was that, uh, uh, Maureen? The sentence I questioned was in the uh, bottom of the first page, the large paragraph, the sentence that begins with Chung McLaughlin shared. requested a withdrawal yeah. without prejudice to the extent the city tried to enliven the order. I didn't know what that meant. 
And I, I can share the screen dev, I have a markup, a slightly updated version, just that part updated with the markup. I so, think McLaughlin um, was, must have been saying that enliven means like, you know, try to reissue the order, yeah, shut reissue. down the order. Yeah. So yeah. Nathan clarified that to me. It was phrase phrasing I didn't right. understand. And right. he offered a slight rewording that made it make much more sort of plain English sense to me. Yeah, okay. and the revision was the sentence I revised to say, McLaughlin requested a withdrawal without prejudice to the extent that the city does not bring back the rescinded demolition order. He was concerned that the city might bring back the order. And then Elizabeth clarified that any order, demolition order that gets brought up is going to be a new order. So you need a new appeal okay. rather than, you okay. know, yeah, so. With so that with that change, one change, we... we want to approve with that one change. So I move to approve with that. Is that all right with you, Maureen, that change? Yes, that, that okay. makes a all difference right. to me. So yes. then Good. with that change, I'd move to approve. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Second, I guess. Okay, and a roll call. Yes, by roll call. Um, David? Yes. El Elizabeth? Yes. And Sarah? Yes. Okay, that's unanimous. And I think we just need, oh, do we have any other, we talked about February, May 9th, there's, there's anything else presently coming up? Nathan? Um, No, that's the only one. Yeah, nothing, nothing new coming up right now. So does that mean we know there won't be hearings on the next couple of dates after May 9th? Or I, yeah, I think it's safe to say, at least uh, conservative speaking, you are free after the May 9th. I mean, you're free for another month. Um, okay. So about... So for, at least for two weeks after the May 9th hearing, I don't think you will have anything. Or basically starting today. So after besides the May 9th hearing, um, you're not going to have anything until May 26th or so. At well, least. that's two weeks okay. after the May 9th. So you yeah. think there's a possibility? We, we can never assume. We've been having a lot of last minute application drop in. <laughs> so there so, could be a May 26th. If there is, I'm not going to be in the country. Okay, let me look at that too. So no, it's May 20th. Three. Uh, yeah, you're right, Maureen. Yeah, May 23. I mean, actually, yeah. we're past that. So, actually, um, let me so correct myself. There won't myself. be one May 23. No, there won't be one already. It's way past that. So, uh, okay. well, not a couple of days past that. So, I think at least until um June 13th, um, okay. there's not gonna okay. be, and there are no new applications right now. So, okay. okay. So, yeah. our next possible meeting will be June 13th. Yes, after the okay. May 9th one. And then in the summer, we have to do uh, make yeah. a decision about July and August, right? But we, right. we don't have we to do, do We don't have to do it yet, maybe. But right. we, we normally just do one meeting each of those months, right? Right. Okay. Um, but I think we have time to have that conversation. Right. I mean, if you decide, Nathan, it would be worthwhile to poll us for our summer availability dates. Good that, idea. That sometimes happens. Okay. Good idea. Okay. So at least vacation schedules. Yeah, yeah. So good to see everybody. Motion yeah. to adjourn. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Uh, do we have a second? Oh, Sarah's muted. Oh, Sarah. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. <laughs> roll call. The motion we roll call. Uh, David. Yes. Elizabeth. Yes. And Sarah. Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Good to see Thank you all. You.